Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to yet another update on the newest art engine. Okay, so for those of you who do not know, go and check out my previous video on where I show the first updates to what I've built. And essentially this is the art engine, a way for us to make layered art with metadata that we can then turn into NFTs, right? And now I'm building out a UI version. So in the previous update, I've showed the UI, how you can upload your files and structure them. And I talked about groups. In today's video, there's actually a few more exciting updates. So let me start off uh, by introducing the media library. So before we had to upload all the files and folders inside this explorer by clicking on a button. Now you can only add folders over here. So you can see that uh, you can just add folders. And the reason for that is because we can now populate these folders with assets from our media library. And so you can click on the media library and import all of your assets. Now I'm going to import this folder, which has folders and files you'll see something interesting happen. Even though there were folders and files, it extracted only the source files in our media library. And this is important because here we can set some settings on them, change configuration, um, and also build out the assets that we are going to use as our traits. It also simultaneously, if you had those folders uh, and nested folders, it would have put them here on the left hand side, like you can see. Now, if we pre-organized our folders and files, we can basically go from here and just start creating a group uh, and then basically start generating, right? But why is the media library important? Well, it's to build out. Maybe I forgot to add some layer. Um, I can then basically click on a few if I wanna select them, uh, drag them in there, and I can go ahead and remove some if I want to as well so it gives us that flexibility first of all okay secondly what i've added with this is the ability to create folders from your files so you can also start off with let's say a clean explorer and you've uploaded your files then you can go ahead and select maybe all the chairs and create that folder here on top of that, one of the changes that I've made is now you can actually see what's inside of this folder and it will actually display all the images. So seeing that these are our chairs, we can rename it. Uh, like before, we can give it a color, but we can essentially see uh, what this folder contains and also, of course, go and select the individual ones. One thing to remember is I'm trying to keep the assets as the source of truth. So when you remove an item here, it doesn't remove it from the media library. This is so that you can use it in the future as well. So with this added flexibility, we get to add, remove, sync files, uh, which is very, very cool. And we can custom build out what our assets are gonna look like that we wanna use in the groups. So we lay out exactly how we want it before we make a group. Now there were many questions about, can I do edge cases? For example, if a character has a backpack, to make sure that the backpack straps is in front of the character and the backpack is behind it. And yes, you can do that. Let's go ahead and upload different data so that I can show you how that would work. I'm gonna refresh and just select some different data for our media library. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna to go to my desktop and we'll go select this one. All right, now we can see we've got some assets of the fur and the faces and uh, backgrounds, but also more importantly, we've got some assets. And so I have a backpack and some backpack straps. And ideally, I would like the backpack and the straps when the backpack is selected to be rendered. And even though they are separate images, I want them to render in, in different depths, right? And that's something that we can configure uh, in this way. So firstly, I'm gonna create a new folder and call this maybe props, like so. And then I'm going to actually rename this backpack to backpack back, and uh, this one just to backpack front. 
And so it really doesn't matter what we name these individual ones. And I'll show you in a second. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to select both of them and just add it as a folder. And this folder I'm going to name backpack. So you can see the two assets in there. This means that currently it's a trait, right? So how do we make it a part of the props? For example, let's say we had these two as props as well. And we know that if the props get selected, we are either going to get a camo or an eye suit, but also I would like the backpack to be an option and then have the back and the front render. So simply we can drag it in there. And now you see the icons change. And so we can see there's a linked file in there and this is the backpack itself. So the props now has three options, a backpack, a camo or an eye suit. And when the backpack is selected, the back and the front is gonna render and you would be able to set the Z indexes on the configuration for each so that they render on the respective level um, behind or before some layer. And also uh, you can rename this trait and these names won't matter. To undo this, because you can do this with multiple things, you can just simply click on the undo button there and it will extract that out so that it's not an edge case anymore. Very, very exciting stuff, right? And uh, now I can't wait to show you something even more cooler. So let's go ahead. I'm going to refresh this so that I can go back uh, to my smaller data set. I'm gonna go ahead and upload the smaller data like so. And uh, I don't need an edge case for now, so I'm gonna undo that. Once I'm happy with my Explorer, I can go ahead and create a group. Like always, we just click there and we can see our group. We can now go ahead and say how many generations we want from this group. So maybe 105, you can rename it like before. Uh, you can lock the groups, but essentially you see all your traits that you've defined in your Explorer. Very importantly now, we can create another group and the group, the group items does not affect the Explorer. So think about it like this. We've got the source of truth, we've got the Explorer with all your assets, and we've got the groups. Each one has less um, importance. So for example, if I go ahead and remove the chair and the subject and the red, uh, and maybe the scene and just leave the background, our things are still in the Explorer. And when I remove things here, um, it will actually remove from the groups themselves because then they are not available anymore. And of course, the media files, if you remove one of them, you're going to remove throughout your project. That's just on a side note. Okay, so let me delete that group. We have a group. We're going to have 100 generations. And so I've added an interesting button. It's this randomize button. So as you can see, I can randomize the instances of how many items uh, or how many instances of an item will render. For example, for the subject, this cat, uh, 31 instances would be uh, in the collection of the 100. You can set this up manually, of course, but I've added this button so you get a quick start with all your uh, randomness. For example, if you then change the uh, group to, let's say, uh, 500, so 500 generations, you don't want to go through each individual one and set the instances. Of course you can, but you can just quickly go ahead and random everything and then go and fine tune the rare items that you want to be, uh, or that you want to have as rare, right? So that's basically a cool feature. So of course we can now close our media um, library, select our group, and we can see that we have our render. Now let's go ahead and rearrange the order. So it's going to be the scene, the subject, or the chair, and then the subject. We don't need this red. That was an edge case. And we have it over there. It looks a bit strange because I believe one of my chairs is missing the bottom. So let me just see which one that is. Let's remove that. Uh, 
Okay. And there we go. So now you can see that we've got the render. And like before, we can go and do this cool 3D, uh, you know, 3D view where we can separate the layers. You've seen that before, but I just wanted to show that again. Now let's get to the cool part. So when you have this selected and you want a, a more visual view of your rarities, you can actually go and select the rarity um, viewer, which is in 3D. So I'm just gonna lessen the amount of generations that we're gonna do, because I need to still fine tune that um, so that we can get a better view of what's happening. So as you can see, I've got this 3D view now and it has the images of each trait. So the subject, the chair, scene, background. And as I'm randomizing, I can see how rare an item would be. If I slowly increase this, just so that we can get a bit higher on the chart, we can see that for the scene, this window is going to render the most. And this uh, square chair uh, is very low on the level, right? So that's going to be your rarest trait of your whole collection. This way, uh, we get to visually quickly see what traits are rare and which ones are not. And I think this is really valuable, um, especially if you have a large collection and you don't want to go through all these uh, items and you just want to see, okay, um, this yellow chair or this yellow red um, background on the background layer is a bit too, um, how can I say, uh, common, right? Uh, we can lessen that and go back and see that, okay, that fits more to what we actually want, right? So I think that's pretty cool. But I can't judge if this is cool, but you can definitely let me know in the comments. So uh, go ahead and don't forget to like this video. Turn on that bell notification, of course, and let me know in the comments uh, what do you think about this feature and, of course, what you want to see added. I will respond to the comments. I've just been very busy. Um, obviously, I'm working and also uh, in the weekends I get to code on this, uh, but please feel free to let me know. I am not done yet and after you are happy with everything, we're going to go to the uh, generator, the render part. Now. I'm still busy with the UI here, so I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what's gonna happen here, but you will have so much control uh, when you do render your collections. But that is time for the end of this video, and I'll show you this stuff once it's implemented on the next video, and I'll keep you up to date. I know everyone's wondering, when is it coming out? When is it being released? Look, I just wanna get it perfect for everyone so that when you use it, um, you have a great experience. So uh, I do not know the release date yet, but I'll keep you informed on the videos. But as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and cheers for now.